Mary Landrieu is the senior senator from Louisiana. She joins us this morning from New Orleans. Congressman Charlie Melanson represents the district where the oil is headed. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Senator, let me start with you. We have heard varying estimates about the amount of oil that is seeping out from underneath the seabed, as many as 5,000 barrels a day. Some estimate it may be even five times greater than that. Do you have a, a, a good handle on how much oil is literally seeping into the Gulf right now? Well, Harry, what I can tell you, it's too much. And to put that in perspective as clearly as I can, in the last decade, the last decade, we've only had 7,000 uh, barrels seep into the Gulf. We're getting 7,000 at a minimum every day and a half with this spill. So it's not really a spill, it's an uncontrolled flow. And to date, BP or any of their partners have not been able to plug this well, and that is the first and most or urgent mm. order of business. But I have to tell you, I'm sorry to say, Harry, that if they cannot get that valve closed, you know, the blowout right. preventer, which failed the first time that this has happened, the only other way that we know to do it is to drill another well to plug it, and that will take anywhere from 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. Three months' time. Congressman Melanson, Talk about the folks in your district. What exactly is at stake for them? Everything's at stake. This is catastrophic. The ecosystem, the coastal wetlands, the marshes, as we refer to them in Louisiana, America's wetlands are the most productive in the country, maybe even in the world. 30% uh, 30, 30 roughly of all the seafood consumed in this country has its origins and beginnings in the coastal wetlands of Louisiana. So it's, it's catastrophic. Uh, we wrote to uh, National Marine Fisheries last week and, and sent a letter hand delivered, said please get ready to, to allocate monies uh, to support the fisheries and the fishermen. In the meantime, they're out there, they want to save their wetlands. This is about saving what makes their living. This is about the area that they've all grown up in and grown to love and make their living from it. So it's important to them that they save it. Um, we've been pushing yesterday, Lisa Jackson and I met with fishermen and OEC people down in St. Bernard Parish. Uh, she was going back to meet with the BP people. It is imperative that they respond and respond mm -hmm. as we tell them rather than question what we're asking. Uh, we know the land. Those fishermen know the land. They right. know the waters. Uh, they can get the job done. We need to depend on them. Yeah. It's their livelihood at, at stake. S S Senator, this is at minimum catastrophic. Has the government done enough in response to this? Were they clued in enough early enough? I believe they understood the seriousness uh, when this blowout uh, took place. Uh, I know that that communication was made, and I know that the federal government has lean forward since day one, but obviously it's not enough on any part, not at the federal, the state, or BP, and we all have to do better. But, but um, Harry, I'll say this. Our delegation has been asking for over 25 years for this government and our nation to understand that this might be 100 percent of the nation's oil, but right now it's 100 percent of our risk. We have been begging and pleading and making the strongest case possible for revenue sharing so we can make our marshes stronger, so we can invest in better research, so we can get our own people you know, up to, up to snuff a little bit better to help mm. protect. So I hope this message will come clear, and that's one of the things we'll take away. We need more research, we need, you know, more fail-safe uh, processes, right. and we need revenue sharing for these Gulf Coast states. Uh, Congressman, uh, especially down there where your folks have had to, uh, uh, you know, rebuild after hurricane after hurricane after hurricane, how many blows can, can these folks take? These are very enduring people. They're, they're tough, uh, but you're right. It, it becomes wearing after a while. Uh, they'll resolve uh, in time, but we have to help them through this period of, of, of process. And then back to what you were asking, uh, Senator Landrieu, you know, our government needs to get somewhere in between drill baby drill and spill baby spill, excuse the expressions. But we need to start having safety be priority, not only for the, the, the people that work on those rigs, but for the estuaries that are surrounding them. They thought at 50 miles that the mm -hmm. government gave them the permits, 
that they never see oil in because of the distance. Sure. Well, they were wrong. Big we need time. to correct that. We, we need to make sure that it's as safe as it can be. Congressman, would you go so far as to say that BP has almost been cavalier in its attitude toward this? Um, my dealings with them, I wouldn't say that, but I think as a, as a general body, uh, moving forward, they have not moved as quickly and as expeditiously as we would have liked them. Of course, all our opinions are subjective. Uh, the, the, they feel that they're moving forward at a good clip. Uh, a good clip to them, for us, uh, Senator Landrew and I, is not fast enough and has not been effective enough. Senator, we're talking about a situation where there's machinery on the sea floor. It's 5,000 feet deep. The only way to go down there and work is with remote-controlled submarines. They had talked about maybe building domes to capture the oil and then pump it up from that. You just said it'll be three months at minimum if they uh, dig a relief well. In the meantime, if this oil continues to pour out at the rate it's pouring out, these fisheries down there could be despoiled for decades to come. Well, we don't know all of those details. What we do know is there's a dome uh, structure uh, that is being fabricated today uh, or fixed today. I think it should have been done months ago and waiting, but we'll look at that uh, later. But the only way to really plug this is to go down. So I think the government is forcing BP, and I hope this is the case, to drill two wells. Hopefully one of them will get there. And these are very expensive to do, but they've got to do it. And then the other thing, people should have some confidence. After uh, the Valdez spill, there was a um, oil spill uh, uh, fund set up mm. in the Treasury. That fund is $1.6 billion dollars. So BP has tremendous liability and then as a backup this fund will kick in. So our delegation is going to be very strong about anyone that was affected negatively being able to be fully compensated. But you know you're right. We don't know what the long-term effects are. But I will right. say this. Very quickly. This is not the time to retreat or back up. We've got to find out what happened, correct it, and then continue to produce the oil and gas and energy that this country needs to operate. We cannot run this business offshore Senator in and other countries. Senator and Congressman, thank you both very much for your time this morning. Do appreciate thank it. Thank you.